Oh, this may come as a shock to you, but I'm a nerd who watches a lot of Star Trek. Long ago, in an ancient era known as the 90s, there used to be this show called Star Trek Voyager, which aired on a network called UPN, or the United Paramount Network. <laughs> Now, many fans of the show felt Voyager had a narrative problem that was known as the reset button problem. The reset button problem was that the most exciting and interesting episodes of Voyager were ones that would end with a giant reset button, resetting the status quo. In fact, it was joked that the only way the writers would ever take any risks in their storytelling would be if they could be assured those risks would have no long-lasting consequences on the episodic nature of the show. Now, as we watch the previews for Modern Horizons unfold, I can't help think of the Voyager reset button problem. Modern Horizons is a set that was made with the intent of skipping standard completely, and much like knowing that time will reset after your episode of Star Trek, this has allowed the people who make Modern Horizons to go absolutely nuts, bend and even break the rules, take chances, and give us the impossible. And so far, the set looks extraordinary. Originally dubbed as Time Spiral 2, the set is, in many ways, everything Masters 25 and Iconic Masters was not. A true celebration, an extreme embracing of Magic the Gathering's gameplay history. With a multitude of returning mechanics like buyback, cascade, change Convoke, Cycling, Flashback, Hellbent, Kicker, Level Up, Ninjutsu, Shroud, Storm, Suspend, Threshold, Unearth, Vanishing, and on and on this set brings us new swords, more of the Horizon Canopy Lands, Urza himself as a legendary card, Slivers with Cascade, Changeling Commanders for EDH, and possibly one of the most skill in intensive draft environments that we've seen in a long time. But the biggest surprise of all came when Magic Arena updated, and the most impossible, most amazing thing was surprise revealed. Magic Horizons is coming to Magic Arena. I couldn't believe my excitement. Imagine the extreme joy of playing this historic and epic set on Magic Arena, getting to watch your favorite M MTG streamers play through Modern Horizons events, another solid and brilliant move by Wizards of the Coast, and... Oh, it's just a link to buy Modern Horizons on Amazon with no store locator for finding a local game store. Because why do that? And they programmed Modern Horizons into Magic Online, not Magic Arena. So enjoy Magic Horizons on Magic Online. You know, if Magic Horizons is a set of riches, then offering those riches on Magic Online and not Magic Arena, it's just an embarrassment. An embarrassment of riches. Blah, 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 blah. Now, I'll be doing my usual is it worth it to buy analysis of Modern Horizons once the set is fully spoiled and fully released. But what I want to discuss in this video is the huge mistake that keeping a set like this digitally exclusive on Magic Online is. And it really is a mistake I feel is an embarrassing one. Why? Well, I use the word embarrassing because that's what a program like Magic Online looks like in 2019. As Magic the Gathering invests an enormous amount of resources, both time and money and advertising, into becoming a digital presence in the marketplace and also an eSport to be taken seriously, you can't seriously highlight Magic Online as the go-to place for the digital Magic the Gathering experience. Yet, highlight Magic Online is exactly what you are doing when an epic and extremely hyped set such as Modern Horizons is digitally exclusive to Magic Online. 
This means that upon this set's release, and from the time of this set's release until the next set, the spotlight, digitally anyway, is going to be placed on the Magic Online client, since that is the only online client that you can play the set on. But Magic Online looks terrible, and it's not what you want to be showing off to customers or to the world. For many, this will be the first and in some cases only way they experience Modern Horizons on Magic Online. Wizards is even encouraging people to play Horizons on Magic Online over attending a paper pre-release by making the set available a full 48 hours before the paper pre-release events begin. This means that the first place Horizons is available for purchase and for play is, again, exclusively on Magic Online. And exclusively, that will last for two days before you can even attend a pre-release. You know, Magic players are active, impulsive, and hype-driven. And for the most part, they're not going to wait until pre-release, but rather log on and pay to play Horizons on software and an interface that is slow, dull, prone to errors, and looks something like it's out of Windows 98. Many of these players are likely part of the huge influx of new players that Magic Arena has brought in, both in terms of digital players and paper. If we've seen a huge surge in Magic players due to Arena, then why would this special and extremely hyped set not be on Magic Arena. That's what's bringing in the new players, not Magic Online. No, Arena doesn't have, and likely won't soon have, if ever, modern. But that doesn't mean that the 249 cards of Magic Horizons couldn't have been programmed into it for the purposes of phantom drafting. To be able to experience Horizons in this way on this amazing Arena client would not only generate huge revenue, but also positive game play experiences, solidifying the foundation of Magic's new online presence. No one is excitedly going to tell their friends to sign up for Magic Online to experience Horizons, but if Horizons was on Arena, then yeah, they'd be like, sign up, you gotta play this. And once it's on, it's on. It's something that can be brought back in the future for flashback drafts, if the decision is ever made to offer a cube on Arena, or God's willing, modern, then those 240 49 cards are there. They've been programmed into the system and can be used again. Now, having more formats than just standard and draft helps retain players on Arena for if we ever experience a period like, well, now, when perhaps standard is starting to suffer. And no, standard popper and standard Momir isn't going to do that. That isn't going to help. But phantom drafting a set like Modern Horizons, yeah, that would. And that keeps players on the client. And they did program Modern Horizons to be played online, but they put that programming effort into Magic Online, not Arena. So they paid programmers and coders and used whatever resources were necessary to put these cards on an online system. Only they put it on this one. And not that one. Do you see why that is crazy? I mean, Wizards is already investing money and resources into programming Modern Horizons Online, so put it on Arena, make it Phantom Draft, take the money. Also, you want streamers streaming Arena, not Magic Online, but many, possibly most of your top streamers are gonna be logging off of Arena and logging on to Magic Online to stream Horizons. And that is not the ideal gameplay and software experience you wanna be showing off to prospective players when they click on Twitch to see what this Magic the Gathering game is all about. 
even for existing players. I maintain that seeing their favorite streamers streaming Horizons on Arena rather than on Magic Online is more likely to get people hyped and wanting to play, wanting to shell out cash big time, whether digitally or for paper product for that experience of playing. Think of all the money and invested resources in the Magic Pro League. If Modern Horizons were on Arena, you could have the MPL play it on Arena. The MPL, like streamers themselves, is just further advertising and hype generation for this game. Why create a set like Modern Horizons and not have the MPL competing and playing with it? That's just a missed opportunity. If you put Horizons on Arena, then you could have your pros, the MPL, your streamers play Horizons, and this would sell Horizons and sell the larger game of Magic the Gathering. Every streamer would be playing it. Instead, many will be playing and therefore advertising Magic Online. Let me repeat that. You have caused your top streamers and players to advertise Magic Online instead of Magic Arena. Why would you want to advertise MTGO over Arena? Why would you want to be associated with MTGO? At the end of the day, Magic Arena is the best way to play Magic the Gathering online. And special MTG sets like Modern Horizons are exciting, extremely positive Magic the Gathering gameplay experiences. To keep the two separate is lunacy. You do not need to program on all of Modern to offer Modern Horizons drafts, nor all of Legacy, nor Commander. It's 249 cards, the same number in the upcoming set and our previous. To rest on Magic Online because it is easy to just let the inferior program putter along to make the set available before even pre-release itself, to put that program as the digital face of Magic the Gathering for any amount of time, one week, one day, is just an embarrassment on the vast, amazing riches this incredible game offers. It's time for more than just the standard set of cards on Arena. It's time to show off what Magic the Gathering can really do and show it off on Magic Arena. It's time for a power cube for us to phantom draft. It's time to just program in classic sets like original Innistrad for us to draft, to put the best of Magic's history on this client. And at the very least, at the very least, if you still refuse to put the best of Magic's past up there, then keep Arena as the future with future special sets. It may be too late for Modern Horizons to be on Magic Arena, but it's not too late for whatever special set is coming out next. And this video was brought to you by Card Kingdom, where now any pre-order of $25 or greater that includes at least one Modern Horizons sealed product will receive a special edition sticker sheet featuring six of the most popular modern archetypes.